On the southwest coast of India is the small state of Kerala, God's own country. Kerala is famous for its classical dance form called Kathakali, paddy fields, boat races, and the backwaters and lagoons that crisscross the state make it a paradise on earth. Overlooking the Arabian Sea, Kerala's extensive coastline produces beautiful beaches and dazzling sunsets that evoke in the soul a response to God's wonderful creation. Kerala is India in a microcosm. It's a land of religions and philosophies. Its inner life is a life of tolerance and coexistence. Here, Hinduism, Judaism, Christianity and Islam coexist in peace. Temple bells and church bells, punctuated by the Musin's call, form part of a harmonious symphony that plays a vital role in the hearts and lives of the people. Christianity is as old as Christianity itself. Saint Thomas, one of the twelve apostles of Jesus Christ, came to India in 52 AD and established the Christian way in Kerala. His teachings about Jesus Christ and the example he set by his own saintly life led many local families to embrace the new faith. He is believed to have established Christian communities at seven centers and instituted a local hierarchy, paving the way for the emergence of a national autonomous church today, the Malankara Orthodox Syrian Church. The St. Thomas Christian tradition in Kerala is not only a witness to the ancient origins of Christianity in Kerala, but also a living example of an indigenous Christian culture. The history of the ancient Christian community has been passed down the generations through several art forms, including Margam Kali, or the dance of the way. St. Thomas was martyred at Mailapo near Madras in 72 AD. Some of his holy relics are enshrined in the present headquarters of the Orthodox Church at Devalokam in Kotayam. Givagis Mar Gregorius Metropolitan, fondly called Parumala Tirumeni, by his devotees, is the only indigenous saint of the Malankara Orthodox Syrian Church. On June the 15th, 1848, in a remote village called Mulam Turuti in Ernakulam district, Saint Gregorius was born. His Chaturuti family was of the ancient Pallitata lineage. His parents, Kuchumatai and Mariam, christened him Givagis, but chose to call him Kuchipura. Kuchipura had four siblings, all elder to him. His two brothers were Kurian and Vakki, and his two sisters, Ili and Mariam. Sadly, his mother died when he was only two. But the maternal affection and care shown to him by his eldest sister, Mariam, who took him under her wing, rarely allowed him to feel his mother's absence. Little Kochepora's formal education began in a makeshift village school, the only facility available at that time. 
His guru, Onakavil Ayya, was a reputed teacher of the area. Later, he continued his education under the guidance of Pulimutil Mani Master. After receiving his primary education in the village school, Kochipora came under the tutelage of his paternal uncle, Palitata Givagis Malpan, a renowned priest and scholar. The Malpan, or teacher, taught him the liturgical language of the church at that time, as well as the rudiments of theology. He soon mastered the Syriac language and helped his uncle by translating many Syriac manuscripts into Malayalam. The impact of St. Gregorio's on our family is really tremendous. While he was alive, he was very particular that he should be kept informed of all that is taking place in our family, even trivial matters. We did accordingly. We sent him letters whenever it was necessary. And he gave us advice and directions in particular matters, which we followed uh, implicitly. On September the 14th, 1857, the Festival of the Cross, 10-year-old Kuchepora was ordained as a Kuruyo by Bishop Matthew Mar Athanasius of the Palakundat family in the ancient church at Karingachira. In 1865, the aged Malpin was fatally stricken with smallpox. Deacon Givagis nursed him till the very end. The dreaded smallpox struck the young deacon almost immediately. Throughout his illness, he prayed for the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary for the illustration of his health. Deep in prayers, Deacon Givagis had a radiant vision of the Holy Mother, graceful, loving and compassionate, who promised him he would soon recover and told him he must devote the rest of his life to the service of God, and recover he did. Praying to Our Lady, the Mother of Jesus, because that is the, she being a human person just like us, and she understands, and she will help us to help to to Jesus, to come to know Jesus better, to come to love Jesus better. So I hail Mary, we use that because when the angel uh, saluted her, he used that in Mary, full of grace. And so we keep on that praying to her and she intercedes for us always. Jesus, Mary and Joseph lived together for 30 years in Nazareth. So we try to make our congregation another Nazareth for love, peace, joy, and unity make. And, we, and, and the fruit of that love and unity is our sharing it with the, the in service of the poorest of the poor. It's the, her intercession and St. Joseph's intercession that has helped us to be kind and loving and and, and, and especially Jesus came to give us the good news that God loves us. Deacon Givagis then moved to his sister's house at Pambakuda for continuing his theological study under the guidance of the Konat Malpan. The library of the Konat family is one of the finest in the world with its collection of rare Syriac manuscripts. Here, for over a year, 
Deacon Givergis's voracious reading enabled him to delve into the recesses of the theology contained in the Syriac manuscripts, many of which he painstakingly copied by hand. This is a Syriac lectionary written by Parimela Mar Gregorios in his own hand, and we keep this as a treasure. I am quoting uh, from St. John, chapter 14, verse 12. It uh, goes like this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that loveth on me, the, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. According to this, saints, are uh, doing sometimes m more wonders than our Jesus has done when he was on the world. This is, this power has been given by Jesus himself. This verse is simple to understand. So, Petimele Thirimini also uh, have, has been doing so many wonders and uh, uh, people believe in that. It is not uh, against the Bible or against uh, the belief in God also. His knowledge of Syriac and the Holy Scriptures and his deep-rooted spirituality made a tremendous impact on Metropolitan Yuyakim Mark Kurilos from Antioch, who chose him as an interpreter during his visits to many of the churches of Malankara. On October the 18th, 1865, the 18-year-old Guy Vergis was ordained a priest by Mark Kurilos at the Mark Thoman Church in Mulanturuti. The title of Cor Episcopa followed soon after. Your Holiness, can you explain the view of our church on the intercession of saints. We do ask the saints to pray for us. Like the Holy Mother beseeching our Lord Jesus Christ in the marriage of Cana. Very like that. The saints can pray to God. And we are actually strengthened by getting the answers of the saints' prayers. And that will lead us to that great practice of asking their intercession in their lives. It is a reality. In 1872, on the Festival of the Annunciation, Pulikutil Mar Dionysius raised him to the monastic order of Ramban. Ramban Givagis then moved to Vatical Dayara, a monastery not far from his ancestral home. Here he lived as a recluse, spending much time in fasting, prayers and meditation, taking as an example Saint Anthony of Egypt, one of Christianity's earliest ascetics. While here, he spent much of his time in solitude in the woods of Thevenal, near the monastery, far from the din bustle of the maddening crowds. 
casting aside all external connections his soul became purified in the fire of his intense meditation and here he received heaven's blessings in abundance it was at this time that his holiness patriarch peter the 3rd of antioch visited india on meeting the pious ramban gibagis the patriarch was greatly impressed not only by his extraordinary command of the syriac language but also by his deep spirituality he soon appointed him as his interpreter as well as his private secretary it was in the capacity that the ramban participated in the mulanturuti synod held in the marthoman church on december the 10th 1876 at the saint thomas church north peru patriarch peter the 3rd raised gibagis ramban to the highest ecclesiastical order bishop conferring upon him the title mar gregorius after the patriarch of jerusalem he was appointed as the metropolitan of niranam along with him five other bishops were consecrated but at 29 being the youngest he soon came to be affectionately referred to as kochu tirumeni at the insistence of kochu tirumeni all the newly consecrated bishops spent 40 days in the tranquil confines of vetical dayara renewing their spiritual energy before setting off for their new duties religion has two dimension or two levels higher religion lower religion in higher religion people now go for god's sake in lower religion people now go for self sake most of these people who come to sacred places to offer offerings now go for self sake rich poor all that so not the common man alone all self centered people are mafia and this mafia people always want some selfish purpose accomplished this is the fallenness of the whole society where we are now placed now only very few people love god for god's sake see i don't love my parents because they give me the share i love my parents because they begot me they are my parents so we must love jesus christ because he died for me rose again for me the christological center is because we believe that all prayers should be addressed to father son holy spirit we can invoke the saints and not pray to saints in orthodox theology we know pray to saints we only invoke the saints that's why in the invocation of the blessed virgin mary we request the blessed mary to pray to his own, her son for us so son can be prayed to but saints can only invoked so distinct difference between Christ and the blessed virgin mary Christ and parimal ceremony so anybody who prays to parimal ceremony as he is the source of blessings he is a ignorant christian ignorant orthodox man he has not been taught orthodoxy real orthodoxy no single prayer is addressed to any saint even to blessed virgin mary if we invoke the saints to pray for us to god the father christ the son holy spirit so this distinction we have not taught to the people and many people say if parimal ceremony uh, prays for me he can give me some blessings that's against the bible against the orthodox theology all blessings from god the father the holy trinity no blessing ever comes from parimal ceremony or any saint they only pray to they, they can pray to god but we can invoke to them see invoking to the saints is not praying to the saints this distinction has to be made very clear to our people many of them i am afraid are cultic they almost substitute uh, parimal ceremony in the place of christ that is a very dangerous trend we have to stop that and tell the people that the parimal ceremony is not christ mar gregorius decided to make pirmala the spiritual center of the niranam diocese he traveled to niranam by country boat 
the common form of transport in those days. Parmala lies on the shores of the Pamba River. It was already known for the famous Paniyanarkav, a temple dedicated to goddess Kali. My great-grandfather Kurdhamathan, in the year 1875, I think so, donated nearly two acres of land for making a seminary for teaching theology. It was a time when we required permission from the king for making churches. He sought the permission from the then king of Travanko and made a semi-permanent shed for the church in the same place of the existing church. Later, he instructed his sons to donate this church and that strip of land also to our churches. As such, his sons donated an elephant by name Kanyar Palivelu. Margregurius made full use of the land donated by Adikapurat Kora Matan at Parumala. His abode was a simple thatched hut known as Aripura. Adjoining it, he built another similar structure which he converted into a seminary. He brought small groups of deacons and trained them in theology, living with them in the traditional Gurukulam method. Some of his disciples subsequently became great leaders of the church. Among them are his Holiness, the Catholicus, Basilius Givagis II, Metropolitan Vatasheril Mar Dionysius, Bishop Paulus Mar Athanasius, Konat Martin Malpan, and Kirke Talekil Father Givagis. Words passed about the miracles wrought by Parumala Tirumeni. People of all faiths flock to him. My name is uh, Rajesh Rajeshagran Pillai and I am studying in DB Pamba College. I come on Fridays uh, to this uh, temple and uh, henceforth also I go to uh, Parimala Church. I, I go there because I have a faith in Bishop, in the Bishop and uh, whenever we want to, whenever we have something to, in our mind, we can always uh, do we can always be successful in our work and uh, that's why i believe and i therefore i go to that church pehle hamara naam kanta devi tha abhi christiani se shaadi ho gaya to hamara naam abhi meri thomas ho gaya isliye yahan par aaya to 15 saal ho gaya kerala aaya to abhi kya parmala tirveni ka pass yahan par pali aaya to 14 varsh ho gaya hamara bahut bishwas hai the church subsequently built in the name of St. Peter and St. Paul was consecrated by Mar Gregorius in the holy presence of Pulikutil Mar Dionysius in 1895 with Mar Gregorius himself conducting the first holy kurbana. He was emotionally attached to the Niranam church as it was one of the seven churches founded by St. Thomas himself in the first century. He visited the church often, conducted mass and on many occasions stayed there. His bedroom and many articles used by him 
are preserved in the special archives in the courtyard of the church. I belong to a generation which has been brought up in the tradition of almost worshipping St. Gregorios as a person far above the norms of ordinary mortal life. He was a great scholar, a great administrator, a great speaker, a tabasvi in the real sense of the term, but these are not the things which have attracted me most. What has attracted me most is the purity of his heart, the levels of spiritual excellence he has reached so early in life, and the manner in which he had acquired real strength of spirituality. In all that he said, in all that he did, I see this spurt of spirituality coming out of him. And I think he is one of those who has really reached the level of being in daily contact with God, living in God's presence, hearing God's voice, and doing what God commanded him to do. This level of excellence in spirituality or these heights of spiritual energy have been reached practically by very few people in the present century or in the last one century. We hear of people in the prehistoric times who wrote the Upanishads, who wrote the Vedas or who interpreted the Gidas. I cannot say anything about their level of spirituality, but in the modern world, in the last two centuries, I cannot find a parallel for a person who had reached these great heights of spirituality and spiritual energy. That's what has impressed me most. Later, Mark Gregorius was also entrusted with two other important dioceses, Kolam and Tumpaman. He is remembered in Tumpaman for his selfless service during a smallpox epidemic which claimed several lives. He stayed throughout at the church, visiting and praying for the sick and dying, and left only after the situation improved. Here too, his relics are kept in veneration. The life of Mark Gregorius was not confined to prayers and meditation alone. He was a visionary who wanted to take the message of the church beyond the borders of the state. When Catholics living in Sri Lanka, Goa and the Konkan coast decided to join the Orthodox Church, Mark Gregorius consecrated a Govan priest, Father Alvarez, first as Ramban and later as Metropolitan Julius Mar Alvarez in the old seminary in Kotayam in 1889. The mortal remains of this bishop of Bombay and Goa are interred in the St. Mary's Orthodox Church near Panjim in Goa. It was in the company of Mark Alvarez that Mark Gregorius went to Ceylon, now Sri Lanka, in 1892. Here he consecrated a Polish-born Armenian priest, Father Rini Vilati, first as Ramban and later Bishop Mar Timotheus, to be the Orthodox head in the United States.
Seen here is a rare photograph of the three bishops taken in Ceylon. A long cherished dream came true when along with a small retinue, Mark Gregorius made the long and arduous journey to the Holy Land today called Israel. They arrived at St. Mark's Monastery in Jerusalem and traveled all over for 17 days, which included the Holy Passion Week. During this time, they visited most places connected with Jesus Christ's life and ministry, his death and resurrection. Back in India, he published a small booklet about his Jerusalem pilgrimage, which is considered as one of the earliest travelogues in Malayalam literature. St. Gregorius of Padimala is the only declared saint of the Orthodox Church. The most remarkable thing about uh, the saint is that he put into practice everything that he preached. There was no preaching without practice. He was therefore both a monk and a head of the church. That is the first uh, remarkable thing that I can speak about him. The second thing was he was not only a bishop but a writer also. He is uh, one of the first people, was first writers to give a dialogue, I mean, travelogue to Malayalam literature. He went to Jerusalem and he had his spiritual experiences and also experience of the travel and he recounts it very beautifully in that book. I have gone through it. The third thing is that it was he who introduced Grigory of Nisa to the Malayalis. And Grigory of Nisa is Grigory the theologian, that is how he is known, one of the greatest theologians of the Orthodox Church. He interpreted Gregory for the Malayalis. The centrality of the Christian church is that every person devoted to Christ must aim at a divine age, aim at becoming a person exactly like Jesus, more or less like God. This is a sort of divine age. This principle was expounded by Gregory of Nyssa and Saint Gregory of Padimala expounded it and he practiced it and showed it to his people how a person can become uh, like God in his real life. In 1899, he went to Kundamkulam and lived in a small chapel near Atat, which is still preserved. He often visited St. Mary's Church at Atat for his prayers. Large groups of people came to see him for his intercession and felt the powers of God in the presence of this holy man.
During that time, he laid the foundation for a new cemetery, which took some time for its completion. It's undoubtedly the largest cemetery in Malankara Church today. Parimala is the saint we adore most. In our daily family prayer, as well as in my personal prayer, we seek his intercessions. For a while, he stayed at the historic old seminary in Kotayam. During this time, he orchestrated the Golden Jubilee celebrations of Joseph Mark Dionysius in 1901, which was attended by thousands of devotees from all over Malankara. He then moved to the St. George Church at Paliyakara in Tiruvalla. As an educationist with a vision, Mark Gregorius foresaw the need and value of schools with English as the medium of instruction. He persuaded the Paliyakara Church to establish a Syrian English school. This school was the first to be named MGM in his memorial soon after his passing away. Earlier in Mulanturuti, he had started the St. Thomas School, which was handed over to the government later. The MGM School at Tumpaman is also a result of his inspiring presence there. In Kundamkulam, the two schools which he started, St. Ignatius and St. Mary's, are also functioning today as government schools. The MGM or Mar Gregorius Memorial Chain of Schools all over India are a lasting tribute to his vision, so evident even during his lifetime. The health of Mar Gregorius was giving way, deteriorating more rapidly because of the severe austerities he was following. In 1902, he returned to Parumala, which he was destined never to leave again. As days passed by, he became weaker and took to his bed. He began to tell those around him that his end was near. When this news spread, Thousands of people flocked to Permala to see the saintly bishop. When he felt that it was time to go, he entrusted the keys in his charge to Bhattacheril Father Givagis, symbolically handing over the responsibilities of the Malankara Church to the man who went on to become Mar Dionysius VI or Bhattacheril Tirmeni, the architect of the independent Malankara Orthodox Syrian Church in 1912. Mar Gregorius spent the next two days in total silence. His inner self had a precognition of the day he would leave the world. On November the 2nd, he received the sacrament of Holy Kurbana for what was to be 
the last time. Then he lay back to wait in complete serenity for his coming tryst with his beloved Lord. He was only 54. Not long after, he whispered, My Lord, three times and allowed his pristine soul to leave for its heavenly abode. November 1902 was perhaps the saddest day in the history of the Malankara Orthodox Church. His devotees received the news of his passing away with profound grief. Thousands of mourners gathered, broken-hearted and weeping, to catch a last glimpse of their beloved Kuchutirimeni as his mortal remains were laid to rest in a place that he himself had chosen earlier. Though saddened by losing his physical presence, with his passing, the Malankara Orthodox Church had the privilege of having its most illustrious son join the great cloud of witnesses. In November 1947, on the 45th anniversary of his death, the Holy Episcopal Synod of the Malankara Orthodox Church proclaimed Givagis Mar Gregorius as its first indigenous saint and November the 2nd as his festival day. Saint Gregorius was a spiritual giant, an excellent administrator, a brilliant theologian, writer and educationist. At a time when the Thomas Christians considered themselves superior, being descendants of the elite class, the saint exhorted his people to break down social barriers and bring the downtrodden and marginalized into the mainstream of society. A haven of peace, a symbol of purity, he remains an eternal source of hope in the hearts of his devotees. Mark Gregorius is the patron saint of the Orthodox student movement of India, which was started in 1908 and is better known by its acronym MGOCSM. Its student centers in Alua, 
திருவனந்தபுரம் அண்ட் கோட்டயம் ஆர் வைப்ரண்ட் சென்டர்ஸ் ஃபார் கிறிஸ்டின் யூத் ஆக்டிவிட்டி த எம்ஜிஓ சிஎஸ்எம் கேன் ரைட்லி பி கால்ட் த கட்டிங் எட்ஜ் ஆஃப் தி ஓத்தரஸ் சர்ச் lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime and departing leave behind us footprints on the sands of time for lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy ghost be with you all now and forever amen <laughs> 